Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Ajay. I'm a doctor from Bangalore, India. Getting into medicine, being in medicine and progressing in medicine has required me to take a lot of exams. So in this video, I'm going to discuss principles that I used for these exams, specifically in the view of cracking entrance exams. But before I begin, I want to tell you that these exams are important but they're not everything. Honestly, if you're of the idea that, uh, you know, let me crack this exam, after that life will be amazing and easy. Well, I've got some bad news for you. It's not like that. Life just keeps on getting tougher and tougher. But if you're determined to crack the exam of your choice and have a healthy outlook about it, the principles from this video is going to help you smash through those exams. Before I begin, I want to tell you guys that I'm not an All India First ranker. I'm not Bhavik Bansal or someone. I had a good rank. I had a rank of 226 in CET Karnataka. This was back in 2013. NEET was just introduced and it wasn't compulsory. So no one gave really much thought about it. For us, the exam to crack was CET. Now these these principles can be readily applied to tests like NEET UG, NEET PG, JE and other tests like that because I'm talking from experience of writing exams very similar to these. But variation of these ideas can be used for almost any competitive exam, let it be UPSC, GMAT, GATE, bank exams, anything. So without much blabbering, let's just get into it. So study a chapter, understand the concepts, and solve as many questions as you can from that unit right after that. Most entrance question banks will have some intro section before they you know, go into the questions. So read that, understand the concepts, and dive deep into the questions. Now solve these questions in a block of 50 or 60 or 100 questions, however it is given in your exam. Solve the question and mark the right answer either on the book or just keep a separate sheet and uh, you know write the option, the correct option there in the sheet and then move on to the next question. Don't you know look into the answer, don't try to read the explanation then, you will lose momentum. So don't do that, do the next question, do all 50 or 60 questions at once, like you would do in a test every day, every time you study. So once you're done with those 50, 60 or 100 questions or however many you are doing in the block, then go back and check the answers and read the explanations of all the questions. It's important to read the explanations of all the questions, not just the ones we got wrong. Many of the times we would have got the answer right just by luck because there are just four options or five options and one of it is going to be right, right? So that doesn't mean you got the answer right by your thinking. It's just sometimes it's just luck. So make sure you read that and sometimes you realize when you read the explanations that your reasoning was wrong. So that is a very good way to learn. Let me start with an example here. I'm gonna give you like a very basic example of an entrance question. I'm just simplifying this to make you understand the concept basically. So let's just imagine the question is, what is a plus b whole squared? So the question is a plus b whole squared is dash. And let's say the options are a squared plus b squared. Option b is 2ab plus 2a plus 2b. And option c is a squared plus b squared plus 2ab and option D is let's just say 2ab plus 2b plus 2a squared something like that okay now you know the answer to this question because you should know this but let's just imagine you don't know the answer to this question right so how do you come to what is the right option either you can derive the whole equation and that takes like five to ten minutes and we don't have that much time in an entrance exam so a easy trick to use is to substitute values so let's say a is 2 and b equals 3. So this would be 2 plus 3 whole squared, which would be 5 squared, which is 25. So now that we know this value, because it's equal, the LHS has to be equal to RHS. So on the LHS, we have 25. So the RHS has to be 25. So just, you know, substitute the values again, a squared plus b squared. So 2 squared plus 3 squared would be 4 plus 9. That is not our answer, so 13. a is not our answer. So A is not our answer, so that's gone. And then you do B, B is also not our answer. And then you come to option C. Option C is A squared plus B squared. So substitute the values, two squared plus three squared plus two into two into three. And that is four plus nine plus two to four. Four into three, that would be 13 plus four three is a 12. That is, 50, that is 25, sorry. So you have the answer, RHS equals RHS, so option C is our answer. I mean, this is a very simplified thing, but if say the equation is something like x squared plus y squared plus 2xy plus 
x cubed plus x equals what? So obviously you can't derive the whole thing if you substitute values for x and y and then do the same for the options, you can come to the right option pretty quick. Now other simple tricks that you can use is remembering mnemonics, remembering common formulas, remembering common values, finding out like short forms to formulas if there are any possible. So how do you get these? You get these by practicing a lot of questions. So also those entrance exam Q banks will have these mnemonics and these shortcuts ways in them. So whenever you come across something like that, make note of it, put it on a post-it note and post it on the wall or cupboard on your table or somewhere where you can like see it every day or whenever you need to see it. And guess who gave me this substitution trick to find answers very easily? Baiju Ravindran, the founder of Baiju's. Baiju in fact started uh, CET and AAEEE coaching back in 2012 when he was still giving those huge CAT classes. So he took a class for all CET aspirants at Jyotinivas College in Bangalore. I still remember he wore an old shirt and he had a broken left arm. He apparently fell playing football and uh, I met him there and I spoke to him and at that point I would have never guessed that he would build a company like Baiju's and become a billionaire. The reason he has been so successful is because he's doing only the things that are required. Like he has like laser focus on absolutely what's necessary. And that brings us to the next tip. When I was in 11th and 12th grade, I was in PCMB stream, which is physics, chemistry, math, and biology stream. So I could get into either engineering or medicine. It was my choice. From the day I decided in 12th grade that I want to get into medicine, my priorities were focused like a laser on just getting that medical seat. Now, if you can't decide early on and you want to try both streams, you still can get in one of the streams, but it'll be much more difficult. Now, having this clear goal will help you narrow down on absolutely what is necessary to get to that goal. Your preparation should be like Blitzkrieg, used by the Nazi Germans in World War II and by the Indian forces in East Pakistan in 1971. Google both of these, they are quite interesting. But basically the idea is this. If you want to capture Bangladesh or East Pakistan as it was called then, you capture Dhaka. If Dhaka falls, East Pakistan falls. And that's how it happened. Why this military example here? Well, you can use the same strategy for your entrance exam as well. In my example, I was clear that I wanted to get into medicine and I had to crack the PCB part of the CET. So this is how scores were calculated back then. They would take the score of physics, chemistry, and biology from the common entrance test, and they would give you a medical rank for the CET. So the marks you got in mathematics in CET didn't matter. How much marks you got in theory exams didn't matter at all. So I had to score really well in physics, chemistry, and biology, and that's all that mattered. So I focused most of my time doing questions on these three subjects only and all of my focus was on CET. I didn't study much for theory but I still got a decent 90%, exactly 90% but I had got 95.5% in 10th grade so if I had studied I could have, I knew I could have you know done much better but it didn't matter to me because all that I was focusing on was CET. On the contrary, if I had decided to go into engineering, I would have to study physics, chemistry, and maths and ignore biology for the CET. And I would have to score well on the theory bit as well. Because for the engineering rank, they were considering the theory scores as well. So in the end, I got a 200 odd rank for medicine and 3000 odd rank for engineering because I got only 18 out of 16 math in the entrance in the CET. But it didn't matter, I got what I wanted. At this point, it's very important to know that if you're liking this video, smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. See yourself, imagine yourself where you want to be in life and know that this exam is going to be a stepping stone, like a direct stepping stone to that success. I imagined myself at the pinnacle of medical success as I thought back then. Mock me if you want, but literally I would write in my notes Dr. Ajayar, MBBS, which is Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery, MS, Master of Surgery, FRCS, Fellow of Royal College of Surgeons, FACS, Fellow of American College of Surgeons, FRACS, Fellow of Royal Australasian College of Surgeons, and PhD. And my work designations would be Consultant Cardiothoracic Surgeon at Fortis Hospitals, Bangalore. I was a bit crazy about Fortis Hospitals back then because it was one of the teaching centers for Harvard Medical School and then also followed by um, 
visiting consultant at Mayo Clinic, visiting professor of cardiothoracic surgery at Harvard Medical School. You see how ridiculous this is, right? I did not even know what half of these things meant. I just took them from my dad's medical journals because they just sounded cool. It sounded like something that I should aspire to become. As you can see, this was like very outlandish and my goals have become more reasonable as time has progressed. But the whole point of doing this was to tell myself look this sounds and looks so cool like this is like the best thing that you can do with your life and what you do this year will have a very direct effect on getting there so suffer a bit now work hard and don't forget where you're headed as you would have heard a lot of motivational speakers say when you want to quit remember why you started and every time i wanted to quit which will happen as it becomes tougher and tougher I thought about this and then my motivation would skyrocket and I would study again. In fact, actually try this. Imagine yourself as a doctor you or an engineer you working at SpaceX or Tesla or as a IAS officer you or something like that. It just sounds so cool, right? So when you have a goal like that, you become extremely motivated. Don't make the blunder of reading too many books and getting your info from too many sources. More books don't mean better results. Always drink water from a tap and not from a fire hose. You will get more water from a hose, but don't fool yourself thinking that you can drink all that water coming from a hose. Treat your time and energy like fuel and spend it only on books that you trust or someone you trust trusts. Ask your teachers, speak to your seniors who have scored very well, speak to other toppers. Find out the right book for every subject and stick to those. And remember again, reading more books doesn't equal getting more knowledge. Read one book for a subject or a few couple of books for a subject and read them as properly as possible and then solve as many questions as possible. I wish I could give you my book recommendations, but I sat the exam seven or eight years back and my book recommendations wouldn't really help you today. Ask people who took the exam last year or the year before that and they'll be the best people to tell you what are the best books in the market right now. So to summarize, point number one is study in blocks. Point number two, find easy ways to solve hard problems. Point number three, laser focus on your priority. Point number four, visualize your goals clearly. And point number five, streamline your efforts. So those were the tips. Make sure you check out this video as well that I published a few weeks back. In that I talk about how I study long hours without getting burnt out and I think that's a very important thing when you're studying for things like entrance exams. I'll be making many more videos about uh, studying for entrance exams, studying in general, general productivity and I also make videos about uh, health and medicine. So make sure you check out those videos whenever they're published. I usually publish on Wednesdays at 4pm Indian time. I'll see you in the next video. Happy studying and good luck.